Hello and welcome to the ENIT Employer How-To Video Series. Today we're going to talk about entering employee hours. We'll begin with the speedy update screen which offers the best and fastest way to get your employee hours into the payroll. Then we'll move on to the calculation screen where you can confirm the dates and calculate your payroll. And finally we'll look at some reports that we can use to review the data and to make sure everything is just right. So let's begin by logging into the program. First we'll choose the payroll service. And to begin, no matter what tab we're on, let's choose payroll, payroll processing, and the speedy update command. As you can see, our demo payroll here has 11 employees, one through 11. And let's just zoom in a little bit here. And if you look under the total hours column, you'll notice that three of the employees have 80 listed for each of them. That means they're salary-based employees and salary hours carry over from each period unless you override them. So this means that the remaining employees shown at zero need their hours entered and we will do that in this screen. So now let's use the column sort feature to make it a little bit easier for us to edit these rows. If I click on the total hours column, I now have it sorted by salary first, followed by the hourly employees. And if I move back to the top and click on total hours once again, the sorter is reversed. So now we're ready to enter the hours for all the hourly based employees who currently show zero. To quickly edit these employees, we can do a number of things. You're probably familiar with the double clicking of a row which opens up edit mode for that single row. But you can also click on a row that needs to be edited and then shift click on the last row that needs to be edited in a group. Now that we have them all highlighted, I can right click and choose the edit toggle edit command. And now all of the rows are ready for editing. So now let's scroll over so we can see the regular hours column a little bit better. And as you can see, all of the hourly based employees show zero hours. For the purposes of our demo, we'll change that to 80 for each of them. So now let's save the changes that we've made to the hourly based employees. We can do that in several ways. Again, we can click on the Save icon for any given row. Or we can right click and choose Edit Accept All for all of the highlighted rows. So this completes the data entry portion of the process. And now we can calculate the pay and check out our pay values and rates. To do so, let's choose the Payroll Processing command and choose Calculations. This screen allows us to define the required settings for performing our pay calculations for the current payroll. The table displays a historical list of previous calculations, including the pertinent data such as the pay type along with the pay run start and end dates. A payroll may be calculated as many times as we need before we close it. This provides us the opportunity to review the pay run details or other testing purposes. Before calculating any pay run, it's quite important to review the start date, end date, and pay date. The pay date is often referred to as the check date. As you can see with our demo payroll, currently it's in the new status, not having been closed yet. So now we're ready to go. We choose the calculate button. And once the calculation is done, a message appears that says the pay is calculated successfully. Please check the report and save a backup before closing the pay. And the status column shows that it is calculated. Now when the program suggests we check a report, it's talking about the payroll register. So we scroll over, we see the generate report button. If we click it, the pay register is created and we can review our payroll.
let's zoom in slightly on the payroll register and we'll notice that the word interim appears as a watermark in the background. That will go away once we close the payroll. So as we scroll through the pay register, we can quickly see each employee has been paid accordingly, salary and hourly. And once we reach the end of the employee list, we have the total shown here. Active employees are 11, paid employees 11. And as we scroll down to the last page in, in the report, we can see the different business accounts that are being used, full rate, Revenue Quebec, and reduced rate. So let's close the report, and that returns us back to our payroll. And that concludes how to enter employee hours in need an employer. We hope you found this lesson useful. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more in an employer videos. Have a good day.